Sunday, everybody. How we doing? How we doing? Wonderful. This How could we be doing any better? I right. don't know. We're having breakfast at <laughs> Breakfast at Tiffany's. <laughs> With Tiffany. There's <laughs> Tiffany herself. This is exciting. Which is a rare occasion for I you know. these days. I know. I do exist. People will say she exists. I do exist. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> She's still an active role in everything that you see here, but of course it takes a team, which we'll introduce you um, to at the end of the yeah. show. Whether but, they like it or not. Whether they like it or not, because right. this yeah. cannot be done without them, right, mm -hmm. Tiff? Oh my gosh, 100%, correct. Because you work also at oh, yes. yeah, so Trouble County Career and Technical Center, I am, right? I'm the culinary, one of the culinary arts teachers, yes, so yes. And bye. paving the way for our next uh, no. group of yeah. chefs and yes. culinary experts. Yeah. What's your one piece of advice that you give your students? Ooh, this is I, 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 oh, I got easy. it. Can I, I ask easy. that? Easy. Yeah, easy. You have to absolutely believe in yourself and believe in what you want to do. If you don't believe in it, then, then who else is going to believe, right? right? That's yeah, right. then it won't happen. You, you have start to believe. With someone. How long, you, how long have you been here? How long oh have we had the restaurant? So I was thinking about that the other day, mm -hmm. and I just slipped past it. It's been 18 years, November 15th. We're Come going on. into our 18th year. How about that? This week. Yeah, because it's, oh yeah. Oh, my goodness. 18 years. I remember when she was just still starting out. You were still yeah. you were yeah. new to, with us on, on the morning show. I'm still, I'm still right. very nervous of the lights <laughs> in the camera <laughs> and uh, the questions. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you guys make it so easy. And now look at us. Do you ever do, like when you're at school, do you ever try to come up with something in the lab there that oh, you yeah. might serve on the menu? Oh, of course. Oh. We have test kitchens at school, test kitchens here. I take here to there, there to here. Yes. I love it. And yes. then you have testers that come up with things that are still on your menu yes. mm -hmm. to this day. Can yes. we start in the I didn't come here? up with it, but I did uh, Did say it looked like a giant manhole cover. And that's And it kind of stuck. For <laughs> right. 15 years. Yeah, now. I think <laughs> so. 15 start years. in the middle and just kind of work your way around. Okay. How about that? All right, yes. So in the middle, what we're known for and what my crew like absolutely probably despises me for right. on the weekend right. are our manhole cover pancakes. So we are a very small family restaurant mm -hmm. with a small kitchen. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're packed, things take a little bit longer. That's okay, it's right. worth um, the wait. And the yep. pancakes are a lot of the reason because of the size. Okay. So that right there would be the chocolate chip peanut butter pancake. Uh -huh. This looks, yes. there's a bunch of different kinds. Right? Yes. Oh yeah, we have so many. I tell people don't get the plain one. If you come in, don't get a plain pancake. Try one of the specialty ones. Very good. And Go then, forward. Yep. So just a typical BLT. Uh huh. Strawberry French toast. Mm -hmm. Club wrap. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's a club wrap. And then this is one of our most popular omelets. This is a chicken buffalo omelet. So you have the hot sauce, you have the ranch, the cheddar cheese, bacon, chicken. No kidding. That's, yeah, that's really popular. This and is then, the one that yes. I will drive. When I lived in Boardman, right. I would still drive all the way from there to here for this and the, everything that's going on here. Yes, that this is, is the Tiffany Tiffany's bagel. Bagel, yes, that's very popular. How presumptuous too. she would put her name on the menu. Because it's that good. And not mine. It's that good. Over and over. <laughs> My <laughs> yes. right. I think your name's on the menu though. It is, it is. Yeah. It has, it it has is. like pesto and cheese mm. and egg. it's just. Yeah, two different oh, kinds okay. of cheese, tomato, yes. I thought this was a sausage sandwich at first, right? No, it's a hand pressed Burger. Love like, it. Yeah. Love hand pressed burger. Onion rings, those are always the best. I'm gonna go ahead and grab that. Yeah, go ahead. Since we're just I, you know, I'm eating. Biscuits and gravy. Oh yes, yeah, sorry. And I need the sausage out. How many Look biscuits at me. do you get? Four biscuits? That's a large biscuit and gravy. Yep. That'll fool you yep. up. And then, and then you know your eggs. eggs your, and sausage. Yeah, I wanted to call that the baby boomers. Because because it's the baby boomer plate. Yeah, uh -huh. that's exactly you what know my what? father orders. Right? Yes. That's exactly uh -huh. what Papa keeps. Yes. That's what they get, right? Yes. And now that's what Sabina has for breakfast. Every single day at home, Fred has to fry her an egg with dry uh, toast. Nice. She's very, very, um, she's an amazing eater. But I've yes, that's seen what this. That's I cannot she believe the things the that she tries. <laughs> I'm proud right. of her. We're going to visit with Tiffany uh, later on in the show. We'll show you more uh, about breakfast at Tiffany's here in Charlottesville. And the plating, of course. we got to mm -hmm. say it's fiesta wear if you're thinking all the colors. And My thank favorite. you to Steel yeah. Light for you know letting us come out here. I know John Miles' daughter, you may not realize, but she used to come here all the time. Oh, very cool. And she loves the food here. So awesome. yeah. 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 Lizzie is a big fan of yours. All right. So. Well, you talked about believing in yourself. Yes, this is a good And one local lady did the exact same thing and came up with her own business, much to the dismay and you know, a lot of people were very suspect about it, but she went through with it anyway and were better people for it. And if he's texting me, you got to see this, Lauren, you yeah. know it's going to be good. So meet Mickey from Honeybee Tencent Events. It started in your mind, why? It's a great question. I kind of just woke up one day and I was like, I'm going to buy a tent. That's probably how all great business ideas start. There has to be some inspiration. 
but maybe not the part about the tent. So my husband, big supporter of me, but when I first came to him with this idea, he was like, you know, I'm not sure if there's really a market for that in Youngstown. And I said, well, then I'll create one. And I did. In August of 2020, I bought that tent and I just posted it on Facebook thinking, well, I'll just get one, maybe two bookings a month, something fun to do. Uh -huh. And it exploded. And I had to start a business basically in about two weeks. The business, Honey Bee Tents and Events, named after her daughter's nickname, was born. And Mickey would bring that tent and decorate it. And basically, we come, we set everything up, it's fully furnished, and then we come back the following day and we tear it down. I think it was just something really unique to the area, and it was in the middle of the pandemic, so people were looking for things to do and to do them outside. I think that kind of gave it a little oomph, but we've stayed strong ever since. Stayed strong and added on. Honeybee has about 27 different ways to celebrate now and lots of packages for kids of all ages. So the Queen Bee Lounge is a really popular one. We do that for birthdays, bachelorettes, and we can accommodate anywhere from 10 to 30 people. It's kind of funny. A lot of them are kids and then we come and we set up and then the parents are like, I'm going to book you. As you can see, the setups are amazing. And when clients walk in and see it for the first time, their responses are even better. That is the absolute best part. That's what keeps me going. That's what I love, what I do. And just seeing their surprise is, like, it really, that's what warms my heart the most. So we had a hotel one where the girls, they were, I think, 10. It was Unicorn Dreams, and we did that downtown, and uh, they lost their minds. It was the best reaction. And the reaction of her support system has changed, from a little skepticism in the beginning to jumping on board, with more to come. You know, people were pleasantly surprised. I think they believed in me, but they didn't. It's really hard to explain until you see it in person. Are you surprised? Well, yes and no. I mean, I guess I've always kind of believed in myself, so. My, my mother-in-law says that she's like, you're always thinking, you're always, you're always on to the next thing. And I am, I'm always, I'm always thinking, I'm a doer. And um, yeah, we have a lot more things coming with Honeybee. <laughs>when we come back, um, one more tribute to our good friend Tommy Matthews when we got to catch up with him in Pesto's Test Kitchen. So you don't want to miss this one. He truly was a, a, su a super Stud. special guy. Stud. Mm -hmm. Papa Canzanetta's Peppers, recipe established in 1975. A family secret is now yours to share with the people who add spice to your life. Choose from mild and hot versions, plus our famous original blend too. They're the perfect punch for any dish, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. We've got the recipes to prove it. Just follow us on Facebook, order online at papacans.com and pick your peck. Papacans.com, order six jars or more and qualify for free shipping. We like it hot. We're glad you do too. Welcome back, as promised. I'm working on this over here. <laughs> yeah. How's it going? I got it. I got it. It takes me a minute. <laughs> this Fiesta is a real party for you today, huh? Good thing we have it. <laughs> I know. It's fantastic. Hey, speaking of cutting and knives, you know, um, our good friend Tommy Matthews, such a a wonderful artisan and a great man. Unfortunately, he lost his battle with cancer just recently. But when we wanted to take a look back in Pesto's Test Kitchen. Yep, and, uh, when they came together. Yeah, we had a good time and, and you'll see why. So take a look. Oh my 
gosh, Pesto's Test Kitchen, look at what we have today. My brother, Tommy right? Matthews, is the one, the only. How's nice on, to brother? see you, Tommy. How you doing, brother? Thanks for having me. Yeah, oh, absolutely. For, Welcome to the Test Kitchen. Yeah, this is a this is a big deal. Um, for the folks at home who might recognize Tommy from our show, we have featured Crooked River Forge before and how he makes these unbelievable knives. But watching how they're made and then watching how they're used. That's it. That's, in what, that's what I'm about. In the hands that it really matters. And uh, that, this is what it's that's about. That's what today, it's all right? about. Exactly. Uh, I pride myself in taking because I. I hunt, so I like taking it from yeah. the field to the kitchen to the dinner table. So yeah. I like to make my knives for all those purposes. So to have a chef of this caliber to use oh. my stuff on a regular no, no, basis no. and it's my pleasure, man. And give me praise oh, for get it, out man. Of here, guys. It's winning for sure. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, Forge and Fire champion. If you haven't watched his show on Forge and Fire, season episode, uh, season um, five, episode thirty-six or thirty-seven, <laughs> depending on what platform you're watching it on. I've recently <laughs> right. come to right. know. So oh, look for the steel takedown bow, which yeah, I didn't see that. One coming but no no yeah, no that was totally ties into and what the thing I do. is you won on an element that wasn't inside of your skill set necessarily right. building a bow out of steel right in how many hours um i think we had what you get four days four at days your home shop four days yeah so yeah. the research that goes behind that, the thought process that goes behind that, you mm -hmm. forged your own arrow tips, made your own arrows, everything. It was, they it's an amazing piece. They supplied the arrows, which was cool. They said you can make your own, oh, but they okay. gave us nice arrow shafts with, with fletchings already attached to them from turkey feathers. And uh, we just had to put the tips on them, which, you know, we had to make like six of those, so oh, great. to make them all So let's work. talk about what you do, man. How You got into this, you were in the steel business, right? Yeah, I was, uh, I came up all the way from being a laborer all the way up through as a purchasing agent in sales, uh, worked for some of the big steel companies in the area, selling and whatnot. And uh, I was relieved of my corporate America duties <laughs> and I had just gotten into, um, you know, I, hobby I was always at first? A, it was a hobby. I was making furniture and people ask me all the time, how'd you get started? I was a blacksmith, you know, I wanted to kind of incorporate that into furniture that I was making. I was doing a lot of pallet, rustic stuff. And I got all the stuff. And the first thing I made was a knife, and I never worked on furniture again. <laughs> well, you found your calling because I'm absolutely, everybody I show your knives to, you're already established yourself as a brand in the area. Just with a few different venues you've gone to, the Youngstown Flea, you know, you know making huge. some knives for me, which I'm honored to have in my collection, and the collection continues to grow because these are all, these are my knives, these are my knives, and I have a lot more knives on the wall. But these are some commercial knives. Right. Tell me the difference between your knives, Tommy, and some of these commercial knives that are great knives. Because this is both of our idol, Bob Kramer right, right there. Right. And then we have Global, <laughs> some great steel from Global in Japan. And then we have your absolutely custom made set. So tell us the difference, why yours are better. Because um, we know they are. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's an honor to, to even be mm -hmm. compared with Bob. Um, he is kind of one of the... Um, he, he brought Damascus back to the yes. to the to the Because it was a lost art. It was, it was. And he is the kind recipes of one of the, were forgot how to forge it, exactly. how to make the And the steel. patterns. I mean you can see the patterns in here. This is multiple layers of steel that create patterns and and what he has done for the industry has kind of like just catapulted this. And he's making knives with meteorites now. Yeah, crazy. Like, crazy where do you even stuff. get that steel? I mean, <laughs> I don't want to even have to put the bill for the travel. That Mark. I'm no, not you no, I don't. I, I know, I know. <laughs> but my stuff is is pretty much all made from high carbon steel. So I you're going to notice. Mean, just look you know, at the craftsmanship in yours. My stuff is not going to be all nice and shiny. Like this is a, a stainless steel Damascus pattern that that Bob did here. But look at my test kitchen. It's very rustic. It is. And, and your knives what, are perfect for it. That's what I pride myself on. You know, people have come up to my table and said, oh. So you refurbish old knives, and I'm like, no, no. but that's a great compliment because I I wanted my knives to look like my grandfather's old knives that I saw around the right. house growing up. The old carbon um, steel, they got yeah, the patina you know, to them. The old Italian making sauce in his basement, yep. and stuffing sausage, and you know mm. using these old knives that have been sharpened so many times that the blade is kind of worn out. Yeah. And I was like, that's what I want my knives to look like. So. I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. So, I, I, how long I, does it take for you to make a knife? I'm sorry, Lauren. Well, that's okay. Yeah. How I get that question a lot too, yeah. and it's hard to say because, as you probably know from seeing how much I bring to the flea, I'm making 10, 15 knives at a time. You know, I cranked out that set, another set of three, a couple other blades that were mixed into that were EDCs and Hunter's type type stuff. Um, so. And that's what's great about how diversified you are, because there's a huge market for the hunters that need skinners right. and all of those different application Bony knives. knives. Exactly, all that exactly. Stuff. Um, so to put it down to, to to one knife, all I can say is in Forged and Fire, I made a knife in six hours. 
Wow. <laughs> wow. And if you've never Start watched that show, the pressure, how, how hot is it in that, that forge? It was August. It was in the 90s outside. We had four forges going in a, a room probably double this size. They and said many, it was over many, how, many studio, how many studio lights above oh, you lighting yeah, you? All that too. You got to figure all that in. So they said somewhere around 113 degrees on the floor while we're working. Wow, yeah. that's incredible. That's crazy. That's incredible. All so, right, so Mark, I have a question. All yeah. Right, so when you're looking at you know just a regular set of knives, you know I would I would go to like Macy's and buy a set of knives, or I would register on my like you know wedding registry for like Hinkle or something like that. Yeah. All good names, but when it comes to the preciseness and the accuracy and like the blade, what are you looking at when well, you are deciding off, for what, what you do in your kitchen? Because this well, is your kitchen. Right? I have a career so that's spanning yes. now a long time. You know, I started collecting yeah. knives around 22 years old. And I showed some, Tommy some of those knives. So I've been collecting for almost 30 years, 31 years I've been collecting knives and use multiple different platforms and knives throughout from both commercial, exotic knives like Tommy, Bob Kramer, things like that. I'm looking for a knife for me that's very well balanced in my hands, which Tommy's knives are so perfectly balanced and you know they just really feel great in your hand. Um, I'm looking for them ease of sharpening because I like a knife that retains an edge really, really well and then it's easy to get that edge back with a honing steel. So I like that about his knives. And also I like how sexy they are, you know what I mean? <laughs> I, you know, you it's want a knife in your sexy. hand when you get to a point in your it career that you, somebody looks at you and say, where'd that guy get that knife? Yeah, looks good. And I'm like, this guy right over here, Tommy Matthews. And so a lot goes into the thought process. And another thing too is nothing against some of the knife makers you made, but I cut myself last weekend prepping in the kitchen and it was like a surgical cut from a scalpel. So that means that knife is going to, cut is going to heal very quickly right. because it was a clean cut. When you buy some of those lower end knives that don't retain that edge, your cut's going to be a lot worse and We're it's gonna not going to heal. Some cutting. We're, We're going to do some, some cutting, cutting when we come back. Is that okay with that? That is. Can we take a break? Sounds good. You're going to stay with us? I'm going to stay here because oh, okay. I love the smell of what's going on in here. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to just see what we're going to be cutting up next. We'll have more with Tommy yeah. and Mark, of course, in, uh, in just a little while, but lots of fun. Yeah. If you know me, you know I'm a sucker for Rice Krispie Treats. So am I. It's one of our favorite things in the whole world. I don't know why. I mean, it's just it, good. It, just, it reminds you of being a kid and yeah. you know what you're going to get. Well, I saw this young lady pop up in a Facebook feed. I did not know her. I did not have the chance to meet her. I did not have the chance to sample her stuff. Mm -hmm. Something about her just, I wanted to know more. So if you can believe it, Mike. 10 years ago she had this idea. One person told her no, and then 10 years later, this is what happened. Oh, I wow. can't wait. So today we're making the hot chocolate Rice Krispie Tree, and that one involves obviously some chocolate. You'll see that in a special blend. It goes into my butter, and then I melt the marshmallows in stages, and then once it gets like nice and gooey and like sticky, then I pour it over the pre-measured, because I like to measure ahead of time. We pour it over the pre-measured Rice Krispie Tree mix and the buttered bowl and get it going. That's how Vel Wall gets most of her recipes going these days. And for Vel, it's all about offering unexpected expected flavors that capture the best of a Rice Krispie treat with a bit of a twist. And that twist means a treat that is simply different from the rest. What makes my treats different is that I really am big on focusing on flavor. That is my main goal, is to make sure it tastes like whatever I say it's gonna taste like, whatever the name is, it's gonna taste like that. So um, even with like my Nutter Butter one, like that one has a special blend. So it's not just like chunks of Nutter Butter in a cookie or in a Rice Krispie Treat. And even like my pumpkin cheesecake one, if you look at it, I don't know if you can tell, if you can see that but um, there are actually two different layers in this one, and that base layer is actually a graham cracker base layer on the tree, and then this is the part that tastes like pumpkin cheesecake. So I really, really try to really get that flavor in, so you're not gonna taste it and be like, oh, I don't know what this is, or it's not gonna just look cute, or if I say like it's Oreo, it's like this one's brown, like almost black, like it's, this one is, it doesn't just have like Oreos on it, like you get the full flavor. And the flavors are always changing. Month to month, season to season, Vel comes up with new recipes that of course have to go through rigorous taste testing thanks to her sweet and supportive parents. They let me pretty much take over this whole room in their house. 
and now it's my treat room until I expand and I'm somewhere else. But um, yeah, I would say it's that much. And then honestly, whenever I'm like super stressed, my mom helps me out a ton. She helps me package a lot of the time, especially if I have a ton. Um, but my dad wasn't always like, oh, let me help you out. He's like, oh, I'll taste them. <laughs> Until recently, there was one week I was just super stressed and um, I used to have these stickers. You'd have to peel them off individually. And my dad actually started peeling them for me. He's like, how can I help? Okay, I'll do the stickers. And then anytime he would see that I had a big order or like a big market coming up, he would just peel the stickers off for me. And who knows, if it weren't for those supportive and loving parents who packed a lunch with an extra punch, maybe we would never have been able to taste a single crispy Vivelle. I definitely was always creative. I was creative, I used to draw, I used to paint, I used to do things like that, but I also was always business minded. I honestly got in trouble at school before because I, um, I sent, I, I used to have like these lunches. My mom would make like these huge lunches for me and they would have so many things. And I'm like, mom, I'm not gonna eat all this stuff. Like I would have like two different packs of like fruit roll up, like fruit snacks and like two, like I'd get like ravioli and a sandwich. I'm like, okay, mom, like this is too much. Like, I'm never gonna eat all this. So I would sell my lunch and I would like pick all the things that I wanted and I would sell bits of it. So I feel like including like my artistic side, which I love, I loved painting and drawing. I used to do that all the time and that like, so I feel like these are like a nice collaboration of the two. So this holiday season, it should come as no surprise that Krispies by Vell will continue to crackle and pop up in places around the Mahoning Valley. I'll be at its major for Black Friday, which I'm super excited about. You'll get to try my like most recent flavor and the pumpkin cheesecake I'm still gonna have for that for that one but that one's over after November so you'll get to try a mix of both and I'm also gonna be at um, the flea on Phelps or Christmas on Phelps is what it's called and that one is gonna be so awesome I'm gonna have some really cool like holiday stuff Hot chocolate is one of the flavors that you guys got to try today. It's really, really good. If you'd like to order your own round of treats, Belle is more than happy to catch up via her social media pages. Just look her up on Facebook or Instagram and maybe keep an eye out for her iconic logo and big flavors in some of your big retail locations in the future. I would love to you know, start manufacturing by the end of next year and I really, really, really want to be in front of like Target or Meyer exec something like that because I really I really want everyone to be able to taste my treats like they're so they're so good and I'm not just saying that because it's me and obviously I would be a little biased but I am like a foodie at heart so I'm not putting anything out unless it's like mm, so good She is gonna be in Meyer. She is going to this be in so Target. Good. That's it's how got good. Got another butter on it. Is and that we, the one you're having? We didn't get to try them until like right now. Mm -hmm. These are delicious. I'm having an apple cider. It, how is it? Pretty good. I never would have thought. So look for the little K logo on there if you ever see them in the store. Whatever she is doing, I love it. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you want it to be like. All right, we'll take our break. Shall we? Then we come we back. Eat more of this and but, more of this. Then we go to the mall. Well, you can see this little art studio. It's not little either, by the no. way. No, mm -mm. I can't see. wait. Be right back. We've weathered our way through 75 winters. Let our service and sales staff help you weather the next storm with peace of mind and the right equipment. Before you know it, the snow will fly. Do yourself a favor and get to do cut before the inventory of our Toro snow blowers blow away. The Toro Power Max for that heavy duty job. The extra edge makes the job easy. And the Toro Power Clear model is simple and quick to use when Mother Nature just won't quit. We've got units starting at just 529. I'm here to tell you about all the cool stuff you'll find at the Metro Monthly store. We have hoodies and sweatshirts and clothing for dad. We have posters and aprons and messenger bags. We have boots, bell, adora, plus t-shirts and caps. We have frame prints of downtown, plus note cards and maps. We have big sizes, small sizes, and plus sizes too. We have cool stuff for grandma and cool stuff for you. So stop by today and please don't delay. Our workshop is humming. The store's up and running. We're here for this season, your holiday store. So shop Metro Monthly for all this and more.
This week's Shop Talk takes us to the Southern Park Mall and the Art Cafe and Eva Popovic, who's been here for how long, Eva? 10 years. Always in the same space? Actually, no, this is our third location uh -huh. right here inside the Southern Park Mall, but three different places from a small to medium to large. Yeah, and it is big here and gorgeous. And the whole uh, crux behind the event is you come in and you do, you can paint or you can do whatever you want, right? Absolutely. Give yes. us an Not idea. everything you Not want. Not everything, okay. within reason. Yeah. <laughs> However, yes, you can create just about any piece of pottery, make memories with your little ones, or big ones, or whatever it is that you want to do, we'll help you through the whole process. And what's nice is they have enough space here where you're able just to, if you're at the mall and you have a few minutes, you can just come in and Absolutely. do it. Absolutely, just come in, you just are welcome, yes. But if you have a big group, it's not a bad idea to make an appointment. Absolutely, because we can customize the setting, whatever they need, if you want to bring refreshments, uh, food, smoothies, whatever it is, Chick-fil-A, pizza, just bring it in, feel at home. This is what we love to do here, you know, just to welcome you mm -hmm. and put you at ease. Very nice. And I, I noticed you have a little event room on yes, the side if you want yes, to do more yes. of a private event. And I'm sure people take advantage of that, oh, right? Oh, most definitely, yes. What kind of groups? Well, it could be a birthday party. Mm -hmm. It could be a retirement party. It could be team building. Why not? Just mm -hmm. bring everybody from your office and create and be together and have the opportunity to just socialize outside the setting. And it's amazing what you see in the personality. But when everybody paints something, you mm -hmm. can actually see their personality. So why not? And you have somebody here helping them, right? Oh, most definitely, yes. Yeah. yes do you yes. find that people do stuff for themselves or do you see that they do it for other people and end up giving it as gifts? Why well, both. A little How, both. However, sometimes they come in and they're like, oh, I need to make a gift for so and so. And then they get so attached to this piece of pottery mm -hmm. that they're not. I'm not letting go. Oh, I make this bag for somebody, <laughs> but I'm keeping it because keep it boy, did I, they feel so accomplished. This is the time uh, of year where everybody's kind of scrambling for Christmas gifts yes, and things like yes. that. This is something really neat. Hold yours up. I'm going to hold mine up. These are, um, this is a pan that you would actually bake something in, yes. but you're able to actually put grandma's recipe in the pan wow, and yes. then bake yes. it in like that. Yes, you can bake it. How do you do yes. it? Do you just write it out and then hand it to you guys or how does it work? Sometimes they bring the recipe from many, many years ago, okay? Mm -hmm. Like the, the recipe could be 40 years old, 50 years old. Mm -hmm. So we clean it up mm -hmm. with the, my graphic designer. Next thing you know, we make it into this wonderful layout mm -hmm. that is going to be preserved here for many, many generations. This is not something that is going to scratch or fade or anything like that. The worst thing that could happen is to break it, but right. we can make another one. Please don't break it. And then we were able, you can even write a little note on the oh, back. You, you can personalize to. the back too with your own handwriting. You know, what a beautiful way to preserve memories from mom, you know, right here. Right there, a cookie plate for your Youngstown cookie oh. table. How much fun is that? This is, oh, we just absolutely love this platter. I don't know if you can see, we actually printed the pizzas right around here. It's and the design of the we, waffle oh, iron thing. Oh, absolutely, the yes. So good. And of course, you know, our tradition right here, Youngson Cookie Table. It is been bought from many, many brides in the area. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, I mean, from all over the United States, people that they move away from here and they want to preserve the, the tradition, they Hello. just... Slice mm -hmm. of Youngstown, Absolutely, wherever you're Absolutely, yes. How much fun. All mm -hmm. right, let's give them the contact information. The uh, The phone number here is... 330-965-3822. And then the website is... The Art Cafe Ohio at Gmail. Oh, see how cool? And if you're at the mall and the door's open, just come on in. We're not too far from the Chick-fil-A. I think everybody knows where that oh, is. Yes. And people can pop in. Thank you for having us, oh, Eva. It is a pleasure. The yes. Art Cafe. Check it out here at the Southern Park Mall. That's Shop Talk for this week. Okay. Check yeah. it. It's so you can big. Make anything you want there and bring your friends and your girlfriends, your guy friends, whatever. Put a big party together. The recipe? Recipes on the, on dish. the dish. Yes. That is the kind of organizational <laughs> skills That's I right. lack in my life. That's right. Fred goes through the frying pans and he finds like pieces of paper. It's one less piece of paper. Yeah. It's already on you the dish. You never know where they're going to pop up right. or where I stash them. So that makes life easier. Oh, you know what? One more time. One more time. Pesto's Test Kitchen. We're going to mm -hmm. hang out with Tommy Matthews. And just keep in mind that our, our thoughts and our prayers are with his family Absolutely. and his wife. 
and um, just a, a, a wonderful man that we're glad that we got the chance to know him. We are back in Pesto's Test Kitchen. We've got Tom Matthews. We have Mark Hanzanetta. I can just get out of the way. I, I don't think so. We love having you here. I mean, <laughs> you, you, you make it all come together, you know. I'm like really, the glue. You are the glue. You guys are the bricks in this, you guys. We had a bunch of knives out before. And we yeah. were talking through some of the differences between how you make knives and why you like a uh, certain knife a certain way. I do, way. I do, I do. And for you guys, you are a hunter. I am. And you understand that we go from turkey to turkey to turkey. To plate. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. Of, and, and this thing. Well, this you know, looks amazing. Uh, my, my chefs in the background, <laughs> our chefs in the background uh, back there, uh, Jesus and Trayvon, they, they prepped this all this morning for us and they did a fantastic job. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite things is this time of year because right. it's meat time, man. It is. You know, we have a lot of vegan food on on our restaurant, yes, Mestru Bistro. I love it. We create it for vegans. But when it comes to fall, I love a proper, I call it proper prime rib. Mm -hmm. Proper prime, like an English prime rib. And then we have this magnificent turkey. And Tommy was going to get us one from his backyard, but they weren't cooperating. No, they weren't coming yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Funny thing about nature. You, were, uh, <laughs> you got your little turkey? But you can yeah. count on Hillcrest Food. <laughs> yes, we can count on Hillcrest Food. They supplied everything today. They're one of our branding partners, and they do a great job for us. I think they actually heard it, and then they made sure that we had the meat here today. So, my gosh, um, you, you can hunt a different day, right? Yeah, we're going to cut will. today. So, Tommy, we're what kind of... What kind of knife do you like to use to cut like a prime rib? What would you recommend? Well, I recommend for, for big cuts of meat, this, this Western French chef is what I call it. So it's sort of like the old French chef. Um, I tend to have a Western kind of spin with the rusticness of the knife and everything. But as you can see, this is, this is probably about a nine inch blade on this on this knife. This is a big piece of meat and we're going to have no problem getting through this, this oh, cut. Oh, absolutely not. Absolutely not. So like I go between different jobs, you know, sometimes I like an eight inch French knife, a 10 inch French knife. Yours is perfect because it's, it's utility for all jobs. You can cut around anything. Because you really only, a chef really only needs three knives. You need a French knife, you need a bony knife, and you need a parry knife. And you can pretty much accomplish anything you need to do in the kitchen with those three knives. So if you pay attention and you have a little bit of extra money in your budget, Go to CricketRiverForge.com, check out Tommy's knives. You're on a little bit of a wait because you're getting to be like a superstar now. <laughs> so how long does it take for us to get one of your uh, knives now? Uh, right now I'm about four to five weeks. Um, the Christmas rush hasn't even hit yet. Um, I have probably about 40 blades on my books right now. So please don't wait. Yeah. Um, get in now um, so that you can have it for Christmas. Uh, I really don't know how many I'm going to be able to take before I have to cut it off. And, well, you're and a one-man show, I am, and that's yeah. what's so special about it. You do this alone by yourself. You craft the blades, the handles, you do all the mill work, you do everything yourself. Exactly. And that's why, I mean, look, what, tell us about that handle because it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, this handle is absolutely gorgeous, and this is some of the only material that I've gotten. Uh, a friend of mine, Scott Johns, down in uh, Jacksonville, Florida. Um, this is called spaghetti oak, or it's a spalted oak. Um, it's just... A, a beautiful piece of wood. I don't know if you can the pick grain, up all the this, graining the is just absolutely. and it does look like spaghetti. So that's kind of the nickname, spaghetti yolk. All right. Well, let's see how that blade performs, Tommy. All right. And this is a great, great meal for the whole family. And well, it's gonna you know what? We wow. do this. I like to do a proper meat. piece of prime rib on on Christmas Day. I really like that. Now, when you cook this piece of prime rib, one of the most important things is. You want to do, and the end cuts are always going to be a little bit more medium, medium, medium well, well done, and we love that for our yes. guests that have that. And then once you get towards that center, you're you going to find going, a perfect, you okay. a, yeah. a perfect medium how thick, rare. How thick do you want to go here? Well, right, whatever you want to do, man. Keep cutting while you're happy. That crust, man. Look at that. That bark crust. is just. That's what yeah. it's all about. You want to make sure that when you pull your prime rib out, you want to let it rest for about 20 to 25 minutes, because if not, you're noticing all the juices are staying inside of the muscle versus steeping out, and that is just so very important. Now you're starting to see that medium, medium rare coming about. It's and like you know what? King. It is. <laughs> you know, we have a nice au jus back here for it. Uh, you can do a great horseradish sauce for it, or you can just eat it on your own. You know, the thing about this is, oh, that looks great. Yeah, that's, that's perfect. That's beautiful. And what you want to notice is this is heavily seasoned on the outside. What did Be you put on it? You put salt, pepper. That's really all you need. 
<laughs> when you have a good piece of beef. And then I love from France herbs de Provence because it's got lavender and it's got I it's got marjoram and thyme and you can smell mm -hmm. all those great herbs. And just look at how that that's fantastic. Ooh, when the, we come back, we're gonna do the turkey. Like look at that. Oh baby. Yeah, that muscle's nice beautiful. and compact. Again, Perfect. the resting of that meat is really, really important. And also prior to that, you wanna make sure the meat is brought up to room temperature before you put it in the oven, because if not, your outside's gonna be cooked, your inside's not gonna be cooked. And this took how long? That took about two hours and 45 minutes. Wow. At what temperature? Um, we were in there at 350 degrees. All right, very good. Taking notes, we'll be right Amazing. back with a special gift from this one to this one. Oh my God, I can't wait. Taking one cash offer for your home doesn't have to be your only option. I'm Barbara Corcoran, and especially in today's current market, having a local real estate agent who offers great marketing and options that are customized to fit your needs is smart. In Youngstown, the agent I trust is Kelly Warren. Kelly can give you a guarantee to sell your home, instant offer, and the best marketing strategies in the Mahoning Valley. Get the option that's right for you. Go to kellysolda.com. RC Compounding specializes in preparing affordable and natural hormone replacement therapy just for you. I have suggested this to so many women because they don't want to take hormones. They can't afford the hormones. I'm living proof. I'm going to be 73 years old and I haven't felt better. When you come in here, you will not get better service. RC Compounding, we care about your health. Thursday, December 8th, one night only, Stayin' Alive, the ultimate Bee Gees tribute band, will be live on stage at the Robbins Theater. All the sights and sounds of the classic Bee Gees hits, Night Fever, Jive Talkin', How Deep Is Your Love, and so many more. Get your tickets at the box office or at robinstheater.com. The definitive Bee Gees tribute experience, Stayin' Alive, at the Robbins, December 8th. Don't miss it. Well, the, uh, the cutting fun has begun in a very yeah. big way. Thanks to Tom Matthews thank and you. Crooked River Forge for being here in Pesto's Test Kitchen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, I'm going to let the man love continue. Uh, I, I know, man because love, Tommy and I have been right? talking about a special project for a long time. And it's we have. finally here. Uh, I'm a big fan of Game of Thrones. Uh, yes, uh, wow. I just said, Tommy, in your spare time, make this. So I've been mm -hmm. a huge Game of Thrones fan, and I love the way the knives look on that, and I wanted a Game of Thrones-inspired Thanksgiving carving knife and fork because I want to pass it down from Kansanetta generation to generation to generation. And there was only one guy I wanted to make that knife for me. So awesome. I haven't seen it yet. He's talked to me. He's he's posted little <laughs> blips that have made me crazy. Right. We so, actually have some of the blips. So on, on, on I know. Video. I know. All right. Let's see it. All right. So Describe this definitely to took me out of my box, which I love to do oh from time to time. My um, God. The stag. Look at this. Is mule deer that came from a friend of mine that I served over in Desert Storm with. Um, he lives out oh, in Arkansas. Man. I did some walnut, leather stack, oh my God. brass. brass um, it, it's above expectation. <laughs> so brass far. Brass liners in there. Um, this is crazy. Tommy, are you kidding me? Oh my me? God, and the way you made the, the antler go to feel in your ergonomic, hand. Ergonomic, right? It's very ergonomic. Oh my God. You better all look out back there. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So let's see how it works, because oh that's, that's going to so be the true test. This is, I wanted to have something special at Thanksgiving, you know. We roasted this this beautiful turkey, and we're just going to go down. You follow the breastbone, oh, oh my god, it's like cutting through butter. Awesome. It's like cutting through butter. And you just follow, follow the, breast the breastbone all, all the way, way down. down. You follow the skeleton, and that's all you do. So you and shouldn't try and just shave off like layer, you layer, layer, I do layer. That, I, I do that when I get to the end. So I just cut this off. And we're gonna pull this off. Do you need any help? No, no. Okay, and just wanna put it right there oh, and just man. look at that. And then, Tommy, look at, uh, look, look at how little pressure. This knife is so perfectly balanced. Awesome. And I am just slicing through it like it is a hot knife going through butter. <laughs> Guys, enjoy man. that, Tommy. It's been an honor to have you on the show. This knife is so ridiculous. Look awesome. at the craftsmanship on that blade. Thank you. And everything, Tommy. Oh. Mm. Thank you so much, my brother. Thank you, brother. You made I hope your family enjoys that for many, 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 many years. generations. So, anyway, happy Thanksgiving, happy Thanksgiving to all happy of our fall. friends out happy there. Happy Thanksgiving. So, continued success, my friend. Thank you. We you love guys. you around here. You're invited. He's invited back whenever he wants, pretty much. I think. <laughs> Always welcome. Awesome. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Lord. You're welcome. 
Valley Spotlight is once again teaming up with Gold Heating and Cooling to heat up your holiday season. That's right. If you know someone who needs a new furnace, now's your chance to help. To nominate someone to win a brand new Lennox furnace, just visit valleyspotlight.com or galtheating.com. Share their story with us and help us make this holiday season extra warm. The winner will be announced on Valley Spotlight at 4 p.m. Sunday, December 18th on the Valley CW Network. Happy, Happy holidays, holidays, everyone. everyone. Welcome back to Valley Spotlight at Breakfast at Tiffany's here in Sharpsville. For people that maybe are scratching their head, like Sharpsville, I've heard of it. I'm not sure where Two it is. Two people I know are not sure where Sharpsville is. Right. One Sharon of which and was on this team. <laughs> Sharpsville kind of all to come together. Yes. Right behind Avalon at Buell, at Buell Park. You've heard of Buell Park just down the hill. You'll see it. It's Google easy. Breakfast at right. Tiffany's. Seven to two. Yes. Every day except for Monday and Tuesday. So you can have breakfast or lunch at Tiffany's. And it's really, really good. Yeah. The, this bagel. Hmm. Right. To die for it. You got to go to this place. I know. You've heard I have of... been hearing about these lovely people yeah. from everyone, and you jumped the gun. I know. Uh, you I did. Know, that's what you, I do. You, you I, stole I've heard this of one farm from me. To table restaurants, but I've never heard of someone that owns the farm and, and the, the table, table part. Yeah, so here we go. Good Intentions Cafe. Amy and I have talked over the years. I used to, I grew up not far from here, so I remember Kinsman when I was uh, a kid, and it was a thriving little town. And we were always talking, and it's like, gosh, you know, I wish if only somebody would do this, or if only somebody would do that. Yeah. And so we said, maybe we're the somebody. We should do it. That's Floyd Davis on the right, sitting with his wife Amy. To tell their start, you have to start at the beginning. Floyd is a farmer. These are the greenhouses on their property at nearby Red Basket Farm. The greenhouses allow them to grow fresh produce and other crops all year round for restaurants. It's very noticeable with some of the things that you can tell what we bring from the farm that gets served in the restaurant. I mean, yeah. the quality is just exceptional. And really, that's what we built the farm on, was supplying restaurants. Now enter Amy, who's the business mind of the two. She wanted to start a market and cafe here in town. We wanted, we wanted to work with local people. That was a big part of it. We wanted local goods, um, and we wanted to be not only like we're the farm, we wanted to bring it to the table. They just needed a place to do it. Well, the Thompsons, the owners of the Peter Allen Inn, offered the old city hall, and soon construction began. Two years later, uh, the building was ready June of 2020. Yeah. Right in the middle of the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you know, we had been two years into the process. The building yes, was done, we're and it's ready. like we've got to open. So we opened. We're ready. So they opened, and the people started coming. They're really blown away. They they look at it like, oh my, I can't believe this is here. Like I can't believe this is actually here. Why so successful? Well, let's start with what's on the shelves. Amy uses a 45 minute radius to find her goods. Some of them have other businesses, some of them work full time, but they have these great other products that they do. And that's how we started. Like we appreciate that, that they're working that hard to have something that they can offer to us. And that's what I feature. And the items from the farm that are turned into those meals that's what makes this place special. You definitely notice a difference in the food that we make here because, I mean, literally, uh, I'll pick stuff in the morning, bring it here, and it's prepared that afternoon. Yes. If you know me, you know I had to try it. The omelet looks like it should be on a magazine cover. And a burger with an egg? Just try to stop me. The burgers are amazing. So I think it's something that we've ended up standing out um, was the burgers and our breakfast. The other things that stand out? The support not just from the locals, but beyond. At times, almost overwhelming. Now, mm -hmm. we, we've had great support from the local community, but what we find is that there's a lot of people from outside our community that come here, but when they come here, they're like, this is fantastic. This is such a great experience. Yeah. And Putting it here and having people come in, especially people that are coming into our community, you have this like old time feel in this community and everything is like very, um, it's pretty, it's very quiet and it's how you feel when you walk in and people walk in the door and there's this feeling that they get and they, they can't explain it, but that's exactly why we created it. So they're doing great things for the town of Kinsman, and they have a pizza place across the street. And I hear the bathrooms are immaculate. Is okay, that, yes, no, that. it is a big bathroom. I did go in. Yeah, I heard that. When you're old, I know. you have to go a lot. So. <laughs> I heard that. I mean, that's kind of how you it's judge a place. It's a very big bathroom. It's very nice. What is the bathroom It's in the old like? town hall, so you know. 
I, anyway. I cannot wait to go out there myself. I have a gift card to go there, oh, too. Oh, you must. I know. You must. I know. All right, ready to check out an old this old house? <laughs> yes. What did, you, what did you say about this one? I said it's strong and, and old. old. And I said it's just like, like myself. you. Yes. We're going to visit with young and cool Kelly Warren right now. Welcome to another edition of Home Advantage with Kelly Warren. And this one, this is kind of fun for me because this kind of reminds me of my grandpa's house. I haven't oh, yes. really felt that way in a while, but like when you walk through it, it has that little creek, but it's mm -hmm. kind of cool. And it just seems to me, and I don't know how old this house is, 20s, 30s, 40s? Uh, built in 1926, so 1926. not quite 100 years. Yeah. And, and we're in Struthers today. Uh, it just seems to me the perception I have is that an older home is built a little bit better than some of the homes today. I completely agree. Okay. The How quality so? and the construction, you just don't get this today unless you're building in that million dollar mark because you're not going to pay for woodwork, real wood trim and floors and mm -hmm. leaded glass and right. just all of the warm fuzzies that these houses just come with for a phenomenal price. Yeah, like the door is made out of wood. Yeah. The floors are made out of wood and these, yes. like you said, these are actual wood things. They don't break off like yeah. you hit them wrong in the wrong way. Yeah, this is 1,100 square feet and I would say to rebuild this you're probably looking at like 450,000 to use the same construction. Same materials. And we're on the market at 100. You yeah, know? and we didn't even get into really the porch outside and, and all that good stuff. But I wanted to center on some of this uh, intricacies mm -hmm. of the lead glass and things like that. Yeah, the, the little details in the trim, the glass, even the um, design in the wood floors, all of those are just those extra touches that really, you know, the people who built the house all those years ago put that extra detail everywhere. So right. I, I love it. It gives me the warm fuzz. Yeah, and, it, and it, it's good for the home too. It keeps it warm, it keeps it cool and all that mm -hmm. stuff, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, so um, a tip though when going into an older home, is there any, anything that you kind of look for when you're walking through? You know what, you'll expect some aged imperfections. Sure. But other than that, I mean, the quality of the construction, they were built to last. Mm -hmm. So the ages of these houses, really you're gonna get so much more time out of them. There's there's no worry about it being an older house, especially if it's had the updated you know, roof and furnace and things like that. That's all I would be concerned about is the mechanical systems. Okay, this one's on Creed Street and Struthers, or I would say like a block south of a high school. Yep. But if people wanna see pictures of it and wanna talk more about this house, what do they do? They find it online, Kelly uh -huh. sold and the phone number? 330-717-2689. Two locations, one in Borman and one in Warren. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Another edition of Home Advantage. Well, there you go. I like that. Yeah. I like the wooden floors and the baseboards and all when that stuff. When you walk through it and it doesn't move. Right. Yeah. It creaks a little, which is cool. That's okay. To me. But Just yeah. as long as the walls aren't like moving with it. Right, you, you know? right. All right, when we come back, don't we meet the team here? Are we meeting the team? We're going to meet the They've team. They've been hiding for here. an hour. They are no longer hiding because this, they deserve all the credit in the whole world. This is one of my favorite things. And we get to hang out with Carl and Julie. If you think Thanksgiving has to be boring, think again and go oh. out there because the market is still open and they're still pulling stuff out of the fields. We'll have all the details after I eat more okay. of this. History is like a window into the past. In my History Press trilogy, Lost Youngstown, Historic Theaters of Youngstown, and Hidden History of Youngstown and the Mahoning Valley, learn little known facts and interesting tales from our storied past. All three are available at Barnes and Noble, fine local retailers, and Amazon.com. We're back at Breakfast at Tiffany's here in Sharpsville. Got Drinking out of our mugs. I was thinking um, about how Thanksgiving is my perfect holiday. Like you eat like crazy, but your mom at, does the cooking and cleans up. Is that what happens? You take a nap. Oh. You wake up, there's football on. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to dress up. The next day you wake up, there's football on. <laughs> It, and Ohio State plays Michigan on Saturday. It's like my holiday. All of the things you are thankful for. Uh, yeah. Really? Yeah, and, and it's debatable on what order that's in. <laughs> well, Family, 
food and football. <laughs> right. I don't know. Well, I think family, food, and Faith. whatever Throw it, it in. might all right. be. Yeah, all those things are covered. So. And in Julie's Farm Market, and any holiday gathering, head out to their, their market first because the stuff that you, you normally would see, uh -huh. it's like above and beyond. Okay. Okay. Well, my gosh, Thanksgiving is just a mere few days away, and yes. we had to come out here and catch up with Carl and Julie Hello. and Julie's Farm Market. How are you today? I am so good. It's a little chilly out, but you know, <laughs> it is. We'll, make, we'll make the best of it. It is. Can you see on my nose that it's turning red? It's red. It's even a little chilly in the, in the market it right is. now, but it that's is. because the doors are still open. You guys are still pulling stuff out of the field. Yeah. Sometimes people forget. Right. That this October, is still happening. It, October, you know, comes the end and people forget that the farms are still open. You know, we're still loaded, obviously, with apples and, and butternut squash and potatoes. But there's a lot of great other things that are going on. You know, we just got come out of the field, we're cutting Brussels sprouts. Literally, they're just coming in as we were standing here. And customers are waiting specifically for some of this stuff because they're getting ready for a crowd full of people in a matter of days. Yeah, you know, they want their fresh cauliflower, mm -hmm. the, um, the great potatoes, and the sweet potatoes that we raise on the farm that, you know, can't get everywhere. Sometimes you go to the grocery store, the lines, they're lines out of everywhere. stuff. They're, you're, you're also wondering sometimes where the food is coming from these yeah. days. That's a lot of like in the news headlines here. Right. I don't think you have to, I don't think you have to worry about that no, so much. Cause not, you could look you're out right there. out the fields, you look out there exactly. and you see, oh, there's someone out there picking uh, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower this morning. You know, you know, if you don't want a big bag of potatoes, you can come and grab a three pound bag of potatoes or, or you can get I can't even move it. the big 50 pound bag of potatoes which is cool because, you know, we can cater to whatever you're looking for, you know, and then uh, also our fun, the, the jewel carrots. I love these. Oops. I love these because in case the queen comes. The queen comes. These are jewel colored. Homegrown right out of the sandy soil here. So beautiful. You know, you got your jewels and then you got your regular carrots. Act like really sweet. It's like night and day, the flavor, you can tell. The fact that you can smell these carrots and they're in a plastic bag, yeah. I think screams cool. why people need to make the Very trip much. out here. Maybe skip the grocery store lines, come on out here and get some of those essentials that you know you're gonna use, and then mix it up a little bit because I, I gotta say, like no kid's gonna refuse, you know, this with some fresh butter right. and these different kinds of vegetables when they just look so beautiful, you can't Good help thing. but wanna no. eat them. Exactly. I, the one thing I did, I couldn't understand um, the sign on this one. What did this say again? That was uh, the cauliflower, yeah. cauliflower and Romanesca. Romanesca, Romanesca. Is, is a cross these between so uh, uh, a cauliflower and like a little little bit of broccoli in it. It's so cool. I mean, it's very... Uh, this is the very, stuff that you don't see everywhere. No. I love that. It's uh, very, uh, let's say, um, different and European. It came from Europe. Those are That's a big... Thing over there and so people love it it's don't, extra sweet if you don't speaking of sweet if you don't want to commit to a giant pie or no. tons and tons of baked items that you're not sure if your family's gonna love I like the idea of you guys having a few things here and there smaller pies that people can yeah. sample and yeah. have something different I love it. yeah cinnamon rolls pecan rolls uh, you know your smaller pies like a pineapple pie you know bring it you don't have to commit I've to I've never it. had a pineapple pie, but I would have to say if it was just this little guy right there, yeah. I'd say, you know what, I'll have a little piece. And for the people who may, maybe don't want the turkeys or the hams or the lasagnas, like my lovely husband, an eggplant parmesan, he would be in love. And eggplant these parm. are the, the freshest you can right. absolutely still, find. still the last round of the eggplants. These are still, still coming, available. right? Yes, yes, we'll have them until we sell out. We got them picked, they're in a cooler. Hot peppers still available. Tomatoes still available. So, you know, we got it all you guys need. We're <laughs> open every day. We are thankful for you, Carl. Well, Give them the hours and everybody where you guys are located because we just had a gentleman from Negley who didn't even know you guys were here. Just yeah, in so, the store right now. Yeah, so the uh, store is the only uh, location open right now. We're on limited hours, uh, fall, winter hours, uh, Monday through Saturday, 10 to 5, Sunday, 11 to 4. Okay. Uh, give us a call anytime. Check out our Facebook page for updates. We're located out here in KF on 46. Tell your whole family we are so grateful to have this lovely partnership with you guys and many years of friendship for me yes. and you. We were just yes. talking about that. One of my very first friends ever in Youngstown, Ohio. Carl and Melanie and Julie. They were yep. my next door neighbors. And I'm yep. so, so grateful. <laughs> All grateful. the fun stories. Lots Talk about stories. years and years. Good times. <laughs> I'm just going to put this down and we'll get back to business. So. Carl, I'm telling you.
15 years. Wow, long time. Well, there you go. I know. Now I'm ready for the big day. You really are. I am. You weren't before, now you are. And you know what? After the big day, if you're hungry, yeah. this place, Friday Breakfast morning. of Tiffany's, is going to be open. You can do it. This you is the whole it. team. Marky, Olivia, Mike, there's probably more. Oh, there's more. Yeah. But this is like, this is what Breakfast Tiffany is right here. These guys mm -hmm. keep it going while I'm teaching. They, they keep it open. They can keep I, the doors open. Can I ask him a pancake question? Yes. Okay. Is it okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> take me through. When, how long does one of those take? Or do, you, do you have it in your brain? Or is there a time to stopwatch? Uh, it's definitely up there. No, it's a pretty quick turnaround, honestly. Um, two, three minutes till so you flip it. Two, three minutes till so it's at the window. Just quick, quick, quick. How do you flip it? It's like... Two spatulas. Like seriously? At the Big same time? Yeah, Tippy yeah. toes. Well, Maybe, not, yeah, not, 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 not for me. Mine, but yeah, like yeah, tippy toes, you get in there and then you're like... What is your favorite thing on the menu? Oh yeah, let's go is that around. Okay? Let's go and around. And then Olivia, yeah. I'm asking you yeah. too. Okay, well, you can't run away for, from me. I for know someone being out front and dealing with it all day, uh -huh. I'm pretty boring. I go for a Western omelet. Okay. All right. That's pretty yeah. lame. It's not boring. Right. It's my favorite. Just kidding. Yes. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. Go. I love the loaded breakfast fries. They are. The oh, all right. What's in them? Sausage, bacon, onion, cheddar cheese, scrambled uh -huh. egg. Mine depends on what I'm hungry for. Okay. Like right now, I'm eyeing up the club. Really? Yeah, the, the wrap, yeah. It okay. just depends on what I'm in the mood, or the burger. How about for you, Mike? I'm pretty basic as well. I mean, I love a scrambler, toss it all in a bowl. Those some, are... Some crispy potatoes in there. Those mm -hmm. are fantastic, simple, too. Yeah. Does your family make you do that at home? <laughs> Stop! The guy needs a day off for heaven's sake. And of course, a big thank you to our friends at Steel Light. Yep. Yes. You guys use their stuff religiously, making it look so perfect and so good. How nice is it as chefs and people in the restaurant industry using plating and things like that that like are, are really going to yeah. stand up? Yep. Nice. I'm telling you, this Fiesta wear in Steel Light, mm -hmm. I swear you can drop it on the ground. It will bounce off the ground and it's fine. It does not Let's break. Let's try it. It doesn't. I'm telling you. It is the most, it is the most durable. It yep. really is. That's what we've used for, gosh, as long as I can remember. Wow. So, yeah, we're, we're only here because they're they're paving the way for us. So. It's, uh, it's good to hear that kind of stuff, and good to see you guys. It's you been do. a long time. Yes, it has. <laughs> see, it's almost over, ladies. It's, it's over now. It's over yeah. now. My Thanks for watching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it for Valley Spotlight this week. We'll see you next time. Retro Marshall time. If you love Rice Krispies, you'll love this. And we do. Wake up, Keith. We've got to leave in 15 minutes. Oh, we've got Shirley fixing breakfast. Wake up, Keith. Wake up, Keith. Keith is turning over. Wants to sleep. Wants to sleep. This always works. Kellogg's Rice Krispies, hear the roar, let them pull. I think I'm waking up. We got sleepy Keith Partridge, wake it up, wake it up, snap, crackle, pop, wake it up. Wake, wake up, up like me, wake, wake up with Kellogg's Rice Krispies. If you like this video, subscribe to Valley Spotlight on YouTube and be sure to click on the notifications bell so you know when we've got some new stuff. You also can like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram and Twitter, and subscribe to us on Vimeo or our Roku channel.